Hi, I'm Toby Bruce, one of the curators here at the Art Gallery of Hamilton, and together with my co-workers, we are going to speed walk you through an installation of one of our exhibitions. In this case, the exhibition is Speaking for Herself, drawn entirely from our permanent collection, and it opens March 9th. Once we have the concept for the exhibition down, I personally like to work with large-scale reproductions of the works in order to start working on my layout. Once I've done that, and these are the images here, once I've done that, I work on a floor plan and I sketch out where everything will go. Picking a colour for the installation is always the most stressful part of curating an exhibition. Look at all these colours to choose from. We have to take into consideration all of the work that's going to be in the exhibition and choose a colour that will set those works off to advantage. For uh, Speaking for herself, we chose black a very bold choice. And our friend James here is transforming the gallery from blue, what it was for the earlier installation, to black. This is Lana Radicevic, our exhibition and publications coordinator, and she's going to walk you through how we take the plan from 2D to 3D. So once I receive a proposed layout using Google SketchUp, I will draw the rooms in 3D to scale, and then insert small thumbnails of works, again to scale. And this allows us to see how much space is available or not for additional works. And it also gives us some sense of how the works will look in relation to each other. Okay, uh, I'm Greg, uh, I'm the chief preparator here at the gallery. And today we're uh, matting and framing some works from the collection, uh, works on paper. Um, so we s start with the unframed work, then we cut a mat. Um, which we hinge uh, to a backing board and then we use um, as free materials to mount the, the print. Um, at that point then we can pop it into a standard frame um, and that way we can reuse the frames uh, many times and then unframe the work after the show is over. Once the works are matted and framed, we bring them out of the vault together with the paintings to do the initial layout. Here you see uh, Paula Estes Mauro, our preparator, and a smiling Tina Destro, also part of the prep team, bringing works out of the vault to begin the installation. Layla showed you the Google SketchUp that we started with, and that's always how we do the initial layout. But once you get in the space, things always change. And so here, together with our curator of contemporary art, Melissa Bennett, we're looking at the space as initially laid out, and seeing whether or not we think it works or not. Here, Melissa and I are thinking we'd like to see Sophie Anderson's uh, portrait of Princess Toklahili switched with Rosalie Fable's transformation, just to see what it looked like. But in the end, we decided that it worked better in the initial plan. And our preparators, Paula and Greg, are always responsible for all of the art handling that happens in the gallery. But it's not just two-dimensional work that it's in the exhibition. We also have a number of works uh, in 3D and sculpture. And here you see Greg and Paula way up in the sky installing uh, Anne Whitlock's quite remarkable work called Means of Escape that gets suspended from that very, very high ceiling. Now let's check in with Christine Braun, our collections manager, and see what she's up to. Fair and condition reports are an important aspect of readying works for exhibition. Each work needs to have its condition assessed so that we can be sure that it is stable enough to withstand the exposure and exhibits no active condition issues that could be damaging to the work itself. For example, paintings are examined under a raking light to check for potential cracking, flaking, or any other surface damage. As we know, cracking is a natural part of many oil paintings and most often poses no danger to the canvas. However, if cracks are noted to be new and active based on previous examination notes, then the painting is likely in need of treatment by a conservator to ensure its prolonged life. Thanks for taking this quick tour with us. As you can see, it takes a lot of people to make an exhibition happen, or as Paula likes to remind us, it takes a village. We really hope you'll come and see the exhibition, which closes March 17, 2019. Oh, and did we mention it's free? Courtesy of Orlick Industries. We sincerely hope we can welcome you to the AGH soon.